This is KWPBLP Newport. Hello there. My name is Vicki Clifton. I'm a minister with the Pentecostal Church of God. I'm presently attending uh, the Pentecostal Church of God in Toledo on Elder Street. If you're looking for a church, you might like this one. We're a friendly bunch, okay? <laughs> Our pastors are um, Claude and Nora Smith. And the congregation there, I'm sure you will like them. All right, let's get started. Um, I'm going to give you the uh, chapters of the uh, books that I'm going to be using today. And if uh, you want to look at them uh, as I go and preach the scriptures itself, or just uh, know that they're in Judges, the 6th chapter, the 7th chapter, the 8th chapter, and also Matthew 8, Habakkuk 2, Proverbs 25, Kings 4, 2 Kings 4, Joel 2, and Proverbs 18. So um, I'll be repeating these with the scripture in a minute. So Matthew 8. Hope you have your pencils, 5 through 10. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. Wow, just that quick. And you know, he's just that, that quick too. Um, when we say a prayer to him sometimes it's very quick and other times it you know we get around to it it's not that uh, urgent or whatever but you know what everything god hears and so the centurion answered and said lord i am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed for i am a man under authority having soldiers under me and i say to this mount this man go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doeth it when jesus heard it he marveled and said to them that followed verily i say unto you i have not found so great a faith no not in Israel. Wow, this man had faith for sure. And you know, one of the gifts of the Spirit is the gift of faith. And so, you know, I have met people in my lifetime that I was amazed at the things that came out of their mouth, the gift of faith. And, and so I thought in my heart, you know, I really would like to have that gift. But, you know, uh, it's hard telling what I would go through before I received that gift. <laughs> but it's a beautiful gift of God. And this man, um, God didn't let him down. This servant was healed. And so, um, you know, we can see that that God is looking for that in each one of us. And um, Jesus is, is the ultimate authority. So <laughs> he was glad that that uh, servant was healed as well, I'm sure, to see that. And, um, you know, as you look through the scriptures, there wasn't one person actually that was uh, not healed. Everyone that came to Jesus or... Uh, he laid his hands on, or however he did it, which was different <laughs> in different ways. Uh, like the man that uh, he anointed or uh, put mud on his eyes, you know. And, uh, you know, you just never know the way he's going to do it. But um, he is God. And, and um, I just thank him for the healings that's taken place in in my life and in my family you know we we really do believe in healing now sometimes if my faith is a little weak you know i will go to the doctor i will tell you that i'm not one that says they never go to the doctor but you know i will and um but i do know that 
Christ always come through for us. So uh, there's another one. Hold on a moment. Habakkuk. What an interesting word. <laughs> yeah, um, I thought, how do I spell that? <laughs> Habakkuk 2, uh, 1 through 3. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And so as I, I begin to uh, study this out, they were looking for the, uh, the second coming of Christ. And so um, very interesting. I, you know, I have uh, used this scripture um, when I'm, I'm waiting for that vision that promise to come to pass in my life. And, uh, you know, if I'm seeking the Lord for something, I'm constantly thinking about uh, that vision that God has given me. And I wait for it, just like it talks here. It's for an appointed time. It's an, for an appointed time in my own life, too. And uh, he said, you know, he, he won't tarry, but um, he'll bring it to pass. Now, in my own life, sometimes it has taken a course of time. But during that time, I'm walking, I'm walking towards that vision. I'm staying busy with the Lord. I'm doing what he's asking me to do. But I'm knowing that one day I'm going to walk in it. In fact... I have been preaching before, and it's like I'm already there. I don't know how to explain that to you, but it's just a faith thing that has happened to me. And so I just waited for uh, that vision uh, to take place in my life. So Judges 6, 11 through 12. Now I, I'm going to bring something up to you. Um Midian, uh, actually, he did some terrible things, um, evil things, because they had idols that they set up. And then there was Balaam they went along with. And then uh, there was uh, different gods that they worshipped. And so, um, you know, God just got tired of it. And he gets tired of some of the stuff, you know, especially that, you know. And so uh, anyway, he turns uh, uh, the uh, Israelites over to the Midianites or uh, Midian. And um, it says they were impoverished. They had little, little of things, including even food, you know. And so... Uh, but they they wanted to do it and they were insisting on it so god just let them have it you know and i think that's the way he is with us sometimes when we're wanting to do things we really shouldn't get into and finally he just said go ahead you know just kind of like he did with balaam you know because uh, he knows we're going to go anyway you know so when god says yes or no especially no uh you better listen because there's going to be repercussions in some way, you know. So here it goes on to say, um, And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which is in Ophrah, and pertained unto Joash the Abazite. <laughs> I can't hardly say that word. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress, to hide it from the Midianites. Well, what do you think was going on there? He didn't want them to see he had that uh, weed or, yeah, he didn't want them to see it or they'd probably take it away from him. And um, 
So that that was going to help to uh, make some meals. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, the mighty man of valor. I bet that just... <laughs> Oh, boy, I can almost, almost imagine what Gideon thought at that point, you know, uh, because his family, he's, a, you know, the tribe that he was in and, and the way he grew up, you know, yeah, I'm least of everybody else, in other words. Why are you picking me? You know, somebody else has got something better to offer. But, you know, uh, God had his eye on Gideon, and he knew that Gideon could complete what he was asking him to do. And so uh, it goes on to say that the Lord was with him and that he was a mighty man of valor. Wow, that's really a compliment. <laughs> and so uh, right off the bat, Gideon is doing exactly what he should be doing, you know? He didn't hesitate, he was faithful to what he did. And uh, he faced that giant in his life. And you know what? He passed the test. And so uh, he really was that mighty man of valor. So as we move through Judges to chapter 6, verse 21. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock. Have you ever seen fire come out of a rock? No, I haven't. But uh, it says it did, so I believe it. And it consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight Moving down now to verse 24. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Peace. Jehovah Shalom is peace. Until this day, it is yet in Ophrah of the Abba's rites. And so he makes an altar for the Lord. And uh, just reading this right now, I'm touched by that. Um, and I'm sure that's very precious in the Lord's sight. And so this guy was unique. He was uh, he was determined. Uh, there's just so many things that you could say about Gideon. And let's read a little more about him. It says Judges 7, 12 through 15. And the Midianites and the Malachites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude and you know that's enough to probably uh for me to turn around and start running <laughs> but you know what he was he was apparently the spirit of the lord was on him and, and the Lord was uh, giving him insight and, and he just had that uh, drive to fulfill the call in his life. Now, I will ask you, has God told you to do something and you're not doing it? You see here that uh, God endued uh, Gideon with power to uh, fulfill the call in his life. You might think, oh, I can't do it. I'm not smart enough. Uh, what did he say earlier? God called uh, Gideon mighty man of valor. And I'm sure he didn't feel like a mighty man of valor at that point. But he stepped into it. And you know what? God makes a way where there is no way. He said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. And so he's always made, already made a way for you. And um, so, you know, he said, he that sets his hand to the plow and turns around 
is not fit for the kingdom of God. It's, you know, that's a command. And, you know, we must obey the Lord. God's got a mighty work for you to do. So don't turn around. And uh, God will help you. He's right there to help you to fulfill that call or that work for him. And so uh, it says, and when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream. And lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell and overturned, that the tent lay long. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joas, a man of Israel. For unto his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host. Wow, <laughs> he's going to deliver <laughs> Gideon, hallelujah. <laughs> because you know what, it, it, um, I, I must say also, Gideon took that step of faith. Like we talked about earlier, the step of faith. You see, you might see something where God has said, you know, well, you're going to step in. Um, I've called you to be a pastor or an evangelist or whatever. And uh, in yourself, you may say, I don't know how I can do that. But step into it anyway. That's where faith takes hold. And you will see. God's not going to let you fall. <laughs> Amen. God's going to make a way. <laughs> wow. It's an exciting thing serving the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, it, and it was so that the hand delivered Midian. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshipped. You see, um, there is a story in Second Chronicles chapter 20, I believe, where um, there was a mighty host of the enemy coming after the children of Israel. And it um, says Joseph, Jehoshaphat just laid it out before the Lord. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he of course, uh, was concerned because they were just like this bunch here you know, without number. I mean, there were so many of them, you couldn't count them. And so he laid it out before the Lord. And then, you know, there was a prophet which told them that they didn't even have to fire a shot, that God was going to fight that battle. Well, you know what? Uh, after that, uh, they began to worship the Lord and the singers were out in front. And you know what? They didn't have to even fire a shot. There were dead bodies the next day. So that tells you you better not mess with them, right? <laughs> okay. And so uh, Judges eight twenty eight. Thus was Midian subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted up their heads no more. And the country was in quietness 40, 40 years in the days of Gideon. Now I'm going to read to you another situation. And, and I'm going to say also that um, I've, I've been prophesied over different times in my life. And, and there's some times when it hits me, I knew without a doubt that it was the Lord. But the Bible talks about in in um, first or second John about try the spirits to see if they are God, and and we we can do that we we can discern you know, and also um, what is the other one? Um, so we discern and uh, and then um, we make up a dis decision or what I'm trying to say is. You know, we get confirmation. And so then we know if it matches, we know that it is of the Lord. And so um, 
I'm one that believes in prophecy, and uh, it is uh, there's different inc incidents in the Bible where they did too. So, and it's in the Word. Second Kings four four, and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons and you know there there was an incident where jesus healed the girl and um he shut the door and and uh why he shut the door is because of unbelief and so these this family was together, and uh, the, the creditors were, were coming to take the kids, or her sons, and so she didn't have any money. And so she uh, uh, got some uh, advice, and basically she said uh, that she brought the vessels, or they brought the vessels to her, and she poured out, and she was going to sell them when they were full. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay the debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. You know... That just goes to show that no matter how bad a situation is, God can change it. And it, it must have been really pretty scary to think about somebody coming to take your own children away because you owed money, you know. So uh, Proverbs eighteen twenty one, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And so, you know, we got to watch our mouth, really. Uh, what we say to people, you know, especially, you know, those of our own household, the kids in the house, our grandkids, you know, uh, speak life into them, you know, tell them how, lo how you love them and, uh, you know, how proud you are of them, things like that. And, uh, you know, some people... Um, I've heard of call their kids names and everything else, and that's not the right way to do it, because you know what? It's going to live, uh, leave an imprint on their life, uh, and they will begin to believe those things, and um, so, and it says, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So, uh, covered your, covered a lot of material today. You know what? I learned a lot in this lesson. I hope you learn a lot. I hope you get your Bible out and, and just read those scriptures that I've just given to you. And you know what? I'm looking forward to the next broadcast, Lord willing. Done. Well, thank you. You have been listening to Winds of Praise. I hope you have enjoyed this message. And I hope that, that somehow, some way, it spoke something to your heart. And I'd just like to encourage you to just, you know, keep on keeping on. You know, seek, seek the Lord daily in prayer. Read your Bible daily. And if, if you aren't uh, currently attending a church, well, then by all means, go out and seek a church. But be sure that the church that you attend is teaching the, uh, the is teaching about the Holy Spirit and the cross where our where our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified to atone for our sins. And I'm not saying go to the attend the first church that you go to. Go ahead and check out a few churches, and eventually you'll find a church that's just right for you. And eventually, in time, the Lord will call you into service. Or that be a singer or a musician or maybe a Sunday school teacher or an adult class teacher 
or maybe even a pastor or an evangelist. Now myself, I've been called to be a musician. I play bass guitar at our church. And my wife, Vicki, she has been called to be an evangelist. So eventually, you know, the Lord will call you to do something, and then he will equip you to do that, to fulfill that role. So just keep your eyes on him, and the Lord will bless you for it. Take care. God bless, and bye-bye. <laughs> 